Sorry guys, I was supposed to release this video last week, but I am having so much fun playing this game that I forgot to make content for it. Whoopsie. Also, food poisoning. Fun times. Anyways, on with the guide on how to manage your ship, resources, and the star map on legendary difficulty. The ship management and development is a very integral part of your campaign. Unlike a lot of RPGs where secondary mechanics like fortress, strongholds, etc. have inconsequential effects on your playthrough, mismanagement of your ship in this game will result in a brutal game over. In fact, the majority of your campaign losses will come from the decisions you make on the star map and not combat. On Legendary, you get a massive 50% research and construction time penalty. You also earn less requisition, your knights heal slower, and have less resilience. All of these modifiers work off each other, resulting in compounding levels of fuck, eventually reaching critical mass and resulting in one final fuck you. Once your ship hull level reaches zero, it's game over. And one of the main sources of damage to the ship will come from intervention events. These trigger randomly and are rarely good news. On top of damage, they result in brutal penalties and sometimes even result in the death of your knights. The other two sources of hull damage are enemy ships who love to park on top of bloom missions and warp storms. Careful when engaging enemy ships as it can result in up to two or more points of hull damage based on the enemy ship's gun battery levels. And traversing the warp storm without a Gelafir built results in an auto intervention event and it's one of the only ways you can get two intervention events back to back. Add on the fact that on Legendary it takes 8 servitors and 20 plus days to fully restore the hull and you can lose the campaign even before you reach late game. Now I may be sounding like I hate this stuff but it's quite the opposite. I love this kind of stuff because it forces you to be flexible and adapt quickly. And coming from a fighting game background, I love games that force me to adapt to an ever changing environment. No one playthrough feels the same. And so this is how you can also be flexible and adaptable to the chaos of Chaos Gate. Because of the limited resources, high cost, and long construction times on Legendary Difficulty, you have to hyper focus your construction plans. Your absolute number one priority is maxing out the ship speed before you transition to the expanded map. Speed gives you so much utility. Before the map expansion, speed allows you to reach up to two blue missions every time it occurs. Post expansion, it allows you to dodge every single chaos fleet on the map with ease and still be able to grab two blue missions per spawning. It just makes life better. All your resources and mission priority must further this one goal. That means every mission that rewards servitors must take priority, even if it means you will only be able to do one mission per bloom. That means in every Grandmaster report, you must pick the option that rewards you with construction speed or servitors. This is easy to figure out as any option that sides with the tech priest or points out the failing of the ship will result in servitors or construction speed rewards. Prioritizing speed also means that you need to avoid intervention options that stop construction or result in the loss of servitors, even at the expense of hull damage. It is fine to take hull damage before the map expands because the warp storms and enemy ships aren't a big enough threat yet and you can outmaneuver them with speed alone. It also means you can't spend resources repairing stuff that will not fulfill your need for speed. That's why you don't have to repair the augmentation chamber because unless you upgrade the servitor production to max, the number of servitors you get is almost negligible. Build it only after you have fully upgraded your warp drives. The construction speed upgrade is not a great investment because late game the bottleneck hampering your ship will be servitor reserves and not construction speed. You can make an argument that it might help you quickly repair your ship when it's damaged, but if it's taking you 30 days to collect all the servitors, then does the speed really matter? Also, you can get plenty of construction speed from the Grandmaster reports and certain events. I do complete the initial repair of the augmentation chamber and the Agorium, but then I don't touch them until my speed is maxed out. Once you have maxed out the ship's speed, your next priority is the Augurium. It is also around this time that you can max out the servitor production if you want. Once the map expands, acquiring seeds and gear becomes your priority, and so it's not always viable to target only missions that reward servitors. As to where to place the prognosticars, Mercy and the Mad did an excellent video on the prime location for placing them. Basically, you can cover the entire map except for two planets. I have the link in the description and the comment section below. Once all your prognosticars, ship speed, and servitor production is out of the way, it is not necessary, but it helps to upgrade your shields and guns on your ship. Eventually, you will have to fight the enemy ships because they tend to stick on top of or around blooms and morbus events. So you have no choice but to charge in and destroy them. And for that, you need to have high shields and gun level. For research, I have to make one amendment to my original guide. 
Prioritize getting Gates of Infinity stratagem before you run into Bloom Spreader missions. These are the missions that have a time limit and a massive horde of reinforcements that appear as soon as you get close to the Bloom Spreader. They are some of the hardest missions in the game, and Gates of Infinity turns them into a walk in the park. Like quite literally a walk in the park. You can walk past all the plants and patrols, spot the Bloom Spreader, teleport your entire strike force on top of it using this stratagem, and focus fire it to death before the enemy can even react. Later on you can achieve the same effect with a librarian. Zeal and Gate will be the two stratagems you will be using for the majority of your campaign. After Gate of Infinity, you can prioritize Seed Extraction or Warp Surge Prevention, whichever one is giving you a harder time in your campaign. I've found that plus one willpower on Warp Surge to be really helpful late game when warp surges are happening basically every third turn. Not so much early on when your prognostic card coverage is limited and corruption is low. Requisition is absolute bottom priority pre-expansion and absolute top priority post-expansion. Pre-expansion you can easily skip missions that reward requisition because on legendary the requisition rewards are so low that they aren't worth the time investment. In fact, majority of your requisition will come from doing the secondary objectives or glorious deeds in every mission, which are pretty easy pre-expansion. You will end up stockpiling quite a bit of requisition. Use it to max out your army level for your gear and recruits. Do not spend your requisition on tier 1 gear. It is simply not worth it and you can't afford to waste any requisition early on. The way I manage my requisition is that I reserve 6 to 8 requisition for every Grandmaster report and everything over that I use to purchase gear. Post expansion, gearing and upgrading your gear is your top priority. So grab missions based on seeds and gear. Ignore the resource rewards from this point on. I tend to focus on the red and yellow seeds as these are the ones that unlock damage and crit upgrades and those really come in handy late game, especially if you're a melee maniac like me. Be mindful of corruption level as well. The way I pick missions to do post expansion follows this order. First, is the corruption close to level 5? Then, is it spreading? Then what gear do I need? And finally what seeds do I need for my upgrades? Distance and resource rewards don't even cross my mind unless it's too far to reach which is rare if you keep yourself stationed in the middle of the map. I shouldn't have to say this but for obvious reasons Morvis gates take priority over everything. Grimoires are something you'll collect as you go. Majority of the times after you complete a blue mission the only second mission in reach will be the one with grimoires only thing to remember about them is that by the time the map expands and you have a low number of grimoires then you need to upgrade the Libras. If you have high number around 7 or more then there's no need to upgrade it. Oh and don't forget to grab Exterminatus because A it is the easiest way to deal with Morbus missions and B it looks sick. You just have to bomb at least a planet in one of your runs. It's too good. You just have to. I refuse to give you permission to complete a campaign without doing one hit. Just save scum if you feel bad about genociding a billion people, but do genocide a billion people. At least once. Another tip, pre-expansion you can somewhat manipulate the position of the bloom spawning. In the smaller map, one bloom will spawn either in the planet next to you or one planet away. The second will always spawn one planet away and the third will spawn as far as possible. Using this in some positioning you can always catch two blooms per spawning. Generally stationing yourself in the middle of the map is the best strategy to get more than one bloom. If you notice a lot of my tips heavily emphasize pre-map expansion prep. That's because once the map expands the game turns into the wild wild west. The blooms spawn really far apart, there are frequent warp storms, corruption level increases dramatically and half a dozen chaos fleets start patrolling the sector. Even Grandmaster Kai becomes an even bigger jackass to you and starts requesting resources from you. If you don't have max speed and at least two prognostic cars ready before you transition to the expanded map you will struggle to reach even one bloom. That is why it is in your best interest to delay the craft world mission as much as possible. One last tip. Make sure at least 8 of your Grey Knights are fully geared and fully leveled before you do the final mission. I learned this lesson the hard way. That's my guide for managing all the ship based mechanics. Next up I will be doing a build guide for team comps and we'll talk about some builds I've come up with and some builds that you guys have suggested in the comments section. Other than that thank you for listening and I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>